Andrew Bynum was once one of the most promising big men in the NBA. He won two titles with the Lakers and looked ready to be a perennial all-star. However, things didn't go that way and Bynum's NBA career ended when he was only 26 years old. Where did it all go wrong? Welcome back to the channel for all things pro sports. Keep it locked right here as we take a look at what really happened to Andrew Bynum. And by the way, don't forget that once we reach 50,000 subs, we're giving away a PS5 or Xbox One with a copy of NBA 2K22. All you have to do to be entered to win is like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications. Andrew Bynum grew up in New Jersey, but he attended several different high schools in the area. He started out at West Windsor Plainsboro High School north in New Jersey, but then would go on to Solberry School in Pennsylvania to finish out his sophomore year of high school. He then moved on to St. Joseph High School in Medicine, New Jersey for his last two years of prep basketball. Bynum was a dominant inside presence throughout his last two years of school, standing out as an inside scorer, rebounder, and rim protector. He was even named to the 2005 McDonald's All-American team. He was originally committed to play college basketball at the University of Connecticut, but he instead decided to enter the NBA draft directly, which you could do back in those days at only 17 years of age. Now regarded as a prospect with immense potential due to his seven foot status, young age and basketball ability, Bynum attracted quite a bit of attention heading into the 2005 NBA draft. He was drafted to one of the NBA's premier franchises, the Los Angeles Lakers with the 10th overall pick. Bynum had some big shoes to fill though. The Lakers had traded legendary big man Shaquille O'Neal to the Miami Heat in the previous offseason and needed a dominant inside presence to complement the play of superstar Kobe Bryant. Bynum no doubt hoped that he could be the missing piece. Bynum's rookie season was filled with learning experiences. He only played in 46 games and did not start a single game. He struggled from the field shooting only about 40% and was even worse from the free throw line at under 30%. In his limited minutes, he averaged only around two points and two rebounds per game. However, he did start to show his potential as an inside presence, especially during his first matchup with the aforementioned O'Neal. In a January 2006 game against the Heat, Bynum was first dunked on by O'Neal, but he came back down on the next possession and answered with a poster dunk of his own over Shaq. The two then exchanged elbows and both got assessed technical fouls, but Bynum had proved his toughness against one of the league's best. The 2006-2007 season was Bynum's first as a majority starter. He started 53 games and played in all 82. Bynum showed considerable growth in this season, scoring 7.8s per game and 5.9 rebounds per game, with his efficiency numbers rising as well. He was starting to look the part of starting inside NBA player in the NBA and was impressing people throughout the basketball world, including famous big man coach Pete Newell. In October of 2007, Newell said the following about Bynum's growth. From the first year to the second year was amazingly different in terms of the steps he made and how much he improved in some areas. The first year he had no idea what he was into. He showed in his second season that the potential is there. However, Bynum wasn't without critics. Two major critics arose within the Lakers' own building, in the form of coach Phil Jackson and star Kobe Bryant. Jackson repeatedly criticized the young big man for a poor work ethic during his sophomore season, apparently motivating Bynum to work even harder on his inconsistent conditioning. Kobe took it to the next level, criticizing Bynum and lamenting the fact that the Lakers hadn't yet traded him in an infamous video. Bryant, famous for his work ethic and confidence, was predictably clashing with the young Bynum and things were far from over. In the 2007-2008 season, Bynum came out ready to prove all of his doubters wrong and began to play at the level of a star that many thought that he could. Still only 19 years old at the start of the season, the young big man averaged 13.1 points, 10.2 rebounds, and 2.1 blocks per game proving himself as an interior presence. However, injury problems began to crop up for Bynum in this season. He missed the remainder of the season after suffering a dislocated left kneecap in January 2008, which required arthroscopic surgery. The Lakers, still strong without Bynum, made it all the way to the finals, but couldn't finish the job. Bynum cashed in on his great potential and recent success in October 2008, signing a four-year, $58 million contract with the Lakers. Now, after shelling out this kind of money on their new big man, LA hoped that they were getting a fully healthy and dominant star. Early in the season, Bynum justified this investment with a career game against the Crosstown Clippers. He scored 42 points, added 15 rebounds, and blocked three shots in a 108-97 Lakers win. Again, Bynum looked ready to take off and play at an all-star level. 
Bynum's knees, though, well, they thought otherwise. This time, it was his right knee that was injured in a February 2009 collision with Kobe Bryant. His torn MCL would keep him out just over two months before Bynum returned to try to take the Lakers over the top. He was understandably hampered by his injury and was not able to play significant minutes in any playoff series. However, he used his physicality and size to impact things just enough in the finals against the Dwight Howard-led Orlando Magic to help bring another championship back to LA. Now, Bynum had a relatively healthy 2009-2010 season, starting 65 games for the Lakers and continuing to show improvement in terms of his scoring ability. He averaged a then-career-high 15 points per game and established himself as both a key player in the Los Angeles offense and a defensive presence on the interior. However, Bynum's right knee again couldn't hold up in the playoffs. He was hurt in the first round with a torn meniscus. Bynum showed great toughness and decided to play through the injury. Again, his rebounding, physicality, and size were key for the Lakers in a run that led them to a second straight championship. Fellow Lakers big man Pau Gasol was quoted as saying that Bynum's tenacity was remarkable. He gave his best, he sacrificed himself in order to help the team and have a better chance to win the championship. The warm and fuzzy feelings that others may have had towards Bynum immediately after the second straight title win quickly fizzled. Bynum, still needing surgery on his right knee, delayed it to focus on recreation and enjoying his summer off after a long season. He was even quoted as saying that it's not the most serious injury. Now, this assumption was not correct. In fact, the surgery, not done until late July, caused him to miss out on more than a full month of game action to start the year. Perhaps remembering Bynum's impact on the previous year's finals, coach Phil Jackson decided to make Bynum's role that of a primary rebounder and defender rather than a scorer. While reports indicated that this was not Bynum's preference, he still followed along and was very effective in this role. The then New Orleans Hornets coach Monty Williams said that he thought Bynum decided the series in their first round playoff exit at the hands of the Lakers. He was that good, said Williams. Unlike in the previous two years, the Lakers couldn't finish the job in 2011. Bynum, frustrated in the final moments of a series loss to the Dallas Mavericks, flagrantly fouled J.J. Barea. Now this led to an ejection, a suspension, and a fine. In 2011, new coach Mike Brown wanted to funnel the ball more to Bynum as management believed he could be an all-star. And they were right. That season, he was named to his first and only all-star appearance. He averaged a career-high 18.7 points per game to go along with a career-high 11.8 rebounds per game. But maybe all that freedom and the added pressure got under Bynum's skin. Him and Brown did not get along with Bynum being benched multiple times for a poor work ethic, bad on-court decisions, and an overall bad relationship with the coaching staff. To top it off, Kobe Bryant seemed to be sour regarding Bynum's usage rate. Despite being well-regarded throughout the league, it appeared that Bynum was on the way out in LA. Bynum was traded to the Philadelphia 76ers in August of 2010 and looked to be the franchise player for Philly. However, his prior injury issues cropped up before the start of the season, when he had treatments done to heal his arthritis. While he was supposed to be healing, he suffered another setback to his knee during a bowling game of all things. Now, whether it was from the bowling injury or a previous basketball injury, Bynum's knees continued to worsen throughout the 2012-2013 season. He initially hoped to play for the 76ers by the All-Star break, but ended up never playing a game for the team due to injury. Bynum left in free agency in 2013. He then signed with the Cleveland Cavaliers, but only played in 24 games for the franchise. He was eventually suspended for bad behavior during practice. Bizarrely, he was apparently shooting the ball every time he received it during practice, regardless of the spot on the court. He was traded to the Bulls in a salary dump trade and then released. He signed with the Pacers to finish the season, but only played in two games before being declared out with, well, you guessed it, another knee injury. He would never play in the NBA again. So what really happened to Andrew Bynum? Two words, knee injuries. It makes sense. Coming into the league as a 7-foot-tall, 285-pound inside player, he seemed destined to have some sort of injury trouble. Just think about Zion Williamson in today's NBA. Also, maybe playing through the injuries that he did during the Lakers playoff runs made things even worse. In addition, Bynum's mental state really deteriorated over his time in the NBA as well. While it is difficult to speculate about the specifics, there is no doubt that Bynum's behavior declined during his time in the NBA. Take for example the wild shooting that he started during his time with the Cavs, which may have been a result of his previous focus on non-scoring roles like defense and rebounding. Then there's also the Kobe factor. The Black Mamba was infamous throughout his career for breaking young players down with his unrivaled intensity, competitiveness, and work ethic. No doubt this happened to at least some degree with Bynum, given the two players' on-court clashes and Kobe's infamous video rant against Bynum. Despite Bynum's great season in 2011-2012, he was still traded away from the Lakers. Some speculate that this is in part because Kobe didn't like or fit in well with the young big man. 
Regardless, this was the start of the serious slide for Bynum. So what do you think about Andrew Bynum? Do you think that it was his injuries, his mental state, or the Kobe factor that brought his career down? Be sure to leave us your thoughts in the comments and make sure that you like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you can watch our latest NBA content as soon as it drops. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.